On the second day of President Cyril Ramaphosa's state visit to London, Britain and South Africa have announced a new health and science partnership. Ramaphosa met with British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak at 10 Downing Street, where the two leaders joined a UK-South Africa business forum to discuss trade and investment. South Africa is Britain's biggest trading partner in Africa. South Africa and the UK, obviously very strong partners, allies, friends, and we share so many of the same objectives, notably transitioning to clean energy whilst creating jobs and opportunity for our citizens. Ramaphosa's state visit marks the first such official guest hosted by Britain's King Charles, who has rolled out the traditional pomp and ceremony to welcome him. Earlier on Wednesday, Ramaphosa met with Charles's brother, Prince Edward, and toured the Royal Botanic Gardens, which will work with South Africa's National Biodiversity Institute on preserving South Africa's plant diversity. The two countries also announced new research collaborations in climate change, vaccine manufacturing, and genome sequencing, which plays a key role in detecting COVID-19 variants. Could the defendant please state his name? Anderson. Anderson Lee Aldrich, the suspect in the mass shooting that killed five people and wounded 17 at a Colorado Springs LGBTQ nightclub, appeared Wednesday before a judge in a video link from jail, seen slumped to the side in a wheelchair with facial injuries and with difficulty speaking. Yes. Aldrich on Tuesday was transferred to jail from a hospital after being treated for injuries sustained in the attack. Police booking photos released on Wednesday showed extensive bruising and lacerations on Aldrich's face, head, and neck. Police initially held Aldrich on arrest charges of five counts of first-degree murder and bias crimes stemming from the Saturday night killings. But those charges were not discussed in the brief advisement hearing, during which the judge granted the request by defense lawyers to get a copy of the arrest warrant. With a protective order in place that it not be released any further. Afterwards, El Paso County District Attorney Michael Allen said he expected to file formal criminal charges ahead of the defendant's next court hearing in December. Defense lawyers said in court filings on Tuesday that Aldrich identifies as non-binary and prefers they-them pronouns. The DA said that would have no bearing on how he would prosecute the case, including whether to bring hate crimes charges. Aldrich was pummeled during the attack at Club Q by a decorated U.S. War veteran, Richard Fierro, who on Monday night described how his training kicked in. I got into mode, and I needed to save my family. And that family was, at that time, everybody in that room. Um, and that's what I, I, I was trained to do. I saw him, and I went and got him. And when I pulled him down, I, 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 I told him I was in him. I, I want to kill you, guy. Fierro's move, along with help from others, was a successful attempt to stop further bloodshed inside the club. The full extent of Aldrich's injuries have not yet been made public. Aldrich is currently being held without bail. John McFall has been named the world's first para-astronaut. Please come forward. He's a British Paralympic sprinter and doctor who lost his leg in a biking accident when he was 19. Now, he's part of a new generation of recruits picked by the European Space Agency for astronaut training. I felt compelled to try and help ITSA uh, answer this question, can we get someone with a physical disability uh, to do meaningful work in space? The ESA posted openings last year for the role of astronaut with a disability and received 257 applications. Candidates were to be fully capable of passing its usual stringent psychological, cognitive tests, and only prevented from becoming astronauts due to the constraints of existing hardware in light of their disability. Diversity it comes in many different ways. David Parker is the ESA's Director of Human and Robotic Exploration. Of course, to be an astronaut is a very exclusive thing to be. But having a disability shouldn't rule you out. And that was really part of this very special project that we launched in this process. McFall will take part in a feasibility study with the ESA to determine the changes in hardware needed for people with disabilities to take part in future missions. I think the message that I would give uh, to future generations is that science is for everyone. And space travel, hopefully, 
can be for everyone. Wall Street's main indexes ended Wednesday with solid gains after the Federal Reserve's November meeting minutes showed interest rate hikes may soon slow. The Fed minutes indicated that a substantial majority of policymakers agreed it would likely soon be appropriate to slow the pace of interest rate hikes, a change that would bode well for stocks, says Devon Drew, CEO of DFD Partners. The Fed's thinking is that, listen, we want to avoid a recession, but we know that we have to combat inflation, right? So we're going to have more rate hikes, but less aggressive than what we've seen in the past. So that was a, that was a very favorable uh, Fed, you know, Fed minutes. So for us, that's telling us that the Fed minutes in the, in the market actually rising is a very positive indicator of a, of a rally coming up. The Dow rose almost three-tenths of a percent. The S&P 500 gained nearly six-tenths of a percent. And the Nasdaq added roughly one percent. Wednesday also brought a mixed bag of economic data. The number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits rose more than expected last week and U.S. business activity contracted for a fifth straight month in November. Consumer sentiment ticked higher and home sales rose above expectations. It was a good day for big tech, with shares of Alphabet, Amazon, and Meta platforms all closing higher. And Tesla jumped nearly 8 percent, with Citigroup upgrading the electric vehicle maker's stock to neutral from a sell rating. Trading volume was thin ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday on Thursday. The U.S. stock market is open for a half session on Friday. Since being banned at the World Cup, these anti-hate armbands have only become more popular than ever. The Dutch company that makes them says they've completely sold out after shipping thousands of them in the past two weeks. It becomes a culture product at the moment and we're getting requests from all parts of the world to buy this product. Amazing. The One Love armbands have been in the global spotlight since FIFA threatened several European teams with yellow cards if they wore them. The bands symbolize diversity and inclusion. Homosexuality is illegal in host country Qatar. But teams are still finding ways to protest. Germany's team was photographed with their hands covering their mouths ahead of their game against Japan on Wednesday. England captain Harry Kane opted for a different band, one that says no discrimination on their opening game against Iran. His teammates took a knee ahead of kickoff. Meanwhile, Iran's players declined to sing their national anthem in a sign of support for mass protests and a violent state crackdown back home. Danish FA CEO Jacob Jensen went as far as to say FIFA was harming soccer with the ban. I think that's deeply disappointing. It's regrettable. And I think this is something that FIFA uh, needs to take a, a long uh, and intense look at in order to change in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm.